about that, so field craft survival. You guys fucking do all kinds of stuff. I've seen field crafts talk about the keto diet. I've seen them talk about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, grappling, tactics, shooting, obviously survival, overland mobility. Am I, am I missing anything here? I probably said other things. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's impressive that you're in all these different spaces and you're, and how many people you're impacting. What was the, what was the kind of the first, what was the first space that you entered in in field craft and why did you do that? It was survival, it was modern survival as I define it, which is being prepared for a modern world. You know, bushcraft is, is really interesting and really cool, but it's the E in the pace plan of contingencies. It's the emergency. If you're running, you know, I always tell people if you're rubbing sticks together naked in the woods, you fucked some stuff up. You've, you've taken 10 steps prior to that and fucked it up. So in modern survival, we focus on the core principles of modern survival. And beginning in the beginning, it was, I've been to every SEER school in the military. I've been to peacetime detention. I've been to covert comms. I've been to restraint and defeat. I've been to high risk, two versions of high risk. I've been to the, the uh, agency's uh, SEER school. So I have a good understanding of the doctrine then the training methodology behind it and figured I would make a kit, survival kit, that allows you to survive for 72 hours because that's the period of time in which the average catastrophe unfolds where whether that's being displaced from an urban to a rural environment, getting out of a bad natural catastrophe, uh, surviving in a, a period of time, that's, that's usually around 72 hours. So I made a survival kit starting out and then we started doing modern survival training courses that focused on the psychology oh, shit. instead of focused on just the skill set. Psychology is so much more important to understand and understanding how it works, meaning how resiliency works, how survival works. And so I started studying uh, case studies on why people live and why people die and formulated a training plan based off of that and then you know, stood up with that survival under, under that method. After that deployment in Yemen, we didn't we didn't keep in touch at all. We didn't really get close to that deployment or anything. And then I'm going through my transition, and I see I'm watching Fox News, and all of a sudden I see fucking Mike Glover pop up on Fox News, and um, I didn't even know his real name at that point. <laughs> and uh, I was like, holy shit, I know this fucking guy. And uh, that's I looked you up. You know, and um, I saw Phil Craft, and I saw your personal IG, and and I was like, holy shit! And then I started following you more and more. And one of the things that I really like about what you guys are doing in the tactical space is you just fucking have this way of keeping it real, and there's not, and you keep the the tough guy bullshit attitude out of it, which makes for the perfect learning environment, but you keep everything very realistic. You're not out there fucking dancing around like an idiot. Um, you're focused on shit that works, and that can be that can be kind of tricky in this space because everybody's looking for the circus, the shit that looks cool, and you create a successful training business without ever getting involved in that shit. How did you do that? You know, what it is, is it's kind of what I've done my entire life, where I'm not worried about popularity. I don't give a fuck about flashy shit. I just don't care. I've never been that way. I grew up poor, and I didn't have a desire to pretend like I was rich. So... I didn't look at what most kids look at on social media, which is popularity. They look at likes, for example. Likes is not a metric to success. It's a metric to popularity. They're two different distinct things. 
I'd rather have 100 likes on a post from 100 people who are willing to train and read my content and take things seriously in survival and preparedness than have 25,000 likes of a bunch of nerds just geeking the fuck out over a picture of something that looks tacky cool. Yeah, I never give a fuck about that. And I also don't give a fuck about teaching people things that are unrealistic. I know statistically that cardiovascular disease and cancer kill more people than anything on the planet. Um, so yeah, you're less likely to be in a gunfight. Gun so maybe instead of focusing on running and gunning unrealistically on a flat range shooting skill and paper, I'll instead focus on the basic skill sets of gun handling skills and safety and the fundamentals of marksmanship. Because I want to make sure the guy or gal who leads my course can draw the pistol safely and engage a threat realistically than fucking run around with a pro mask on looking like a fucking operator when you've never operated a day in your life. I hate, I, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. Just, I, I'm not a fan of it because at the truth and core. You're such a great press accent. We all have choices and options. And I get the customer's gonna go where they wanna go. But like I said, I have my tribe and people who follow us and people who buy shit and train shit. I'm good with that. I, I, I'm not interested in being the fucking the Walmart tactician. Not interested at all. I mean, that's cool because you're also, at the same time, you're, you're looking for a particular customer, client, suit, whatever you want to call it, just by saying that. And uh, I think that drives a lot of the... So that's my pandas. I call them the end of the world. Like ancestor. Then. It's got to be yeah, because if they haven't they returned many generations and there's not that many pandas on the boat, <coughs> they're on the turtle. I knew the way I would attract the right people was by doing what we do. It was being real. It was, it was uh, you know, having realistic expectations of training. And that uh, trying to build a business off of a gimmick. Yeah, everybody, everybody nowadays comes to the table in a business plan with a gimmick. And my mom raised me business to, to understand that hard work, discipline, and your ethic is what's going to get you to the top. And maybe that's one slow step at a time, but that scales <laughs> more optimal for me because it doesn't deviate from my values. So just putting out that would attract the right people, and it has thus far. Um, we've, we've grown slowly over the last uh, few years, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with slow growth. Yeah. A lot of these kids are living in fantasy world because they want to be somebody. I feel sorry for them. They want to be something significant, and so they use their social media to to uh, virtue signal to the world that they're something they're not. It's called emulation. It's what emulators do. It's what we did, just in a different way. I mean, I used to read Mac B. Sog books, sniper books from John Foster, Carlos Hathcock, all those guys. And when I read those books, I went in the woods and I pretended. But I did that when I was a kid, not a fucking adult. <laughs> and these guys are fucking grown ass men LARPing on social media without the deliberate plan to do something significant. Yeah. Uh, I always tell these kids who, who ask for advice, I'm okay with giving you advice. I'll give you free advice all day as long as it means something at the end of the day, not just you uh, perpetuating a feeling. Because you tell your friends at the bar that yeah, yeah, you're you're trying trying out for special operations, and then two years later you're still sitting on your 
past and if you if your authenticity really comes through in your lives and, and everything else and I think a lot of people are really really drawn to that especially um, nowadays more than ever with all this, this phony shit on social media and uh, I mean all of your branches of field crafting seem to be growing very steadily what's next next for us is partnerships with good companies that represent preparedness and survival. We all have different genres, you know, whether it's Bible level tactical or BCM. Uh, people have their narrow field fields of fire, but we want to partner with good businesses and develop better equipment that helps people survive. There's a whole bunch of deficiencies in the game because a lot of companies are focused on the wrong priorities, in my opinion. I agree with so you. So <laughs> we're going to fix, we're going to try our best to fix those. And they continue doing media, man. I, I, I love the media thing like you do. 